in this video, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to talk about the the phaser framework. I'm going to show you this uh, little game I've been building here with the phaser framework, and I'm going to walk through uh, what a phaser project looks like. Uh, so the phaser framework is a it's a HTML5 game development framework. So it allows you to build uh, games with web tech. So the kinds of games you're going to build with phaser uh, might not necessarily be uh, the sort of big 3D uh, action games you will see uh, on the mobile app store, uh, but it's a good framework for building these simple sort of uh, Flappy Bird style games uh, that aren't too resource intensive. Uh, obviously with uh, mobile web apps you don't have access to as much power as you do with a native app uh, and if you follow my uh, tutorials on i2 and stuff like that generally for those business sort of mobile apps, uh, that's not really an issue. We don't run into too many performance issues as long as we design the application well. Uh, with the game, it's a bit uh, different because we are doing more resource intensive things. But again, uh, if you design the game well, uh, it's a simple enough game, uh, you can quite easily make uh, great looking games with web tech. So this is just a, an example of a game I'm working on right now. Uh, it's a bit of a, I guess, strange concept I'm trying out. Uh, I got some levels up, you can switch between here, uh, I'll just start on the first one. And so the basic idea is that you pre-record your moves for the level, so I have to jump beforehand and then it will run and I can see if I complete the level or not. Uh, so this is a, I've got a long way to go before I finish this game, but I just wanted to sort of show you an example of what a, a face game might look like. Uh, but what I really want to do in this tutorial is go through a phaser project. Uh, so that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so I've just got one of my tutorials that I've uh, written up now. Uh, level up your phaser games with ES6. Uh, this is a little post I did uh, that describes how you can create a phaser project uh, using an ES6 uh, style. So the, the phaser framework, is, it's just a, a JavaScript library you can include and you can just use that uh, how you'd use a normal uh, JavaScript library, you can just inject it with a script tag in your project and start building things. Uh, but it's working in an Ionic 2 sort of background. Uh, I like the sort of ES6 TypeScript style uh, of structure, and so it's nice to be able to use that in Phaser as well. So I'll be using this as an example uh, for this tutorial. Uh, I have a boilerplate set up um, here that you can use. Uh, I based it on a setup by uh, a uh, boilerplate that somebody else created. I hope that I have their uh, name in here somewhere. Oh, yeah, so this is the this is the original uh, phaser template that they created. They have done the most of uh, most of the work here, setting up all of the the compile process. Uh, I've just modified that to include a sort of basic structure for how I like to structure uh, phaser projects. Uh, so we're going to create a project based off of this and then I'm going to walk through the different parts of uh, a phaser project. So if you look in this tutorial, you can see that uh, we can just run this command here uh, to clone that uh, boilerplate and create a new project. So I'm going to do that now and we'll just change it to, uh, I'll just call it a phaser example and we'll let that download. Okay, so now that's done, we'll change into that new project and then we just need to install the dependencies with npm. So we can run npm install and that'll handle that for us. Okay, so that's done installing now. Uh, so now project's set up and ready to go. Uh, to uh, view the project through the browser, you'll need to start a web server just like you do for Ionic 2 applications, how we run Ionic Serve. Uh, for this project, you'll just need to run uh, npm start and that'll start up the server for us. And then you can see here we've got the, the URLs which we can use to access the game. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not actually going to be building anything in this tutorial. I'm just going to walk through the, the uh, files and folders in the project. Uh, so I'll open that up in Sublime now and we'll walk through it. Okay, so this is the project we just generated. And you can see all the, the folders we have over on the left here. Uh, this is a similar sort of idea and structure to an Ionic 2 project where we have our source folder where we do the majority of the coding uh, and then the build process that we have built into this uh, will then uh, create a build in the build folder and that's what we're actually running uh, through the browser. 
but most of the coding is, will happen in the source folder here uh, and we also do have this static folder for static assets so this is going to be things like um, sprites for uh, the player uh, so you might have a little uh, sprite of a, a running person or something like that that you want to use as the character and we can also have we also got like our index uh, index file in here as well and you can see this is where we include the phaser library so uh, just like with uh, mobile web apps like uh, with Ionic uh, in the end it's just a normal web page uh, and that's what we have here we just got a standard sort of HTML for a normal web page and then we're including the uh, phaser library and the game.js uh, file uh, which will be the the built uh, minimized version of our game and so if we look in the source folder as I mentioned this is where we'll be doing most of our coding for the application uh, so we have the index.js file here which is kind of like the setup uh, for the game and this is what will create the game in the in the page and it adds our states to the game uh, I'm not going to cover exactly what states are uh, in too much depth here I do have a tutorial on that which I'll link to uh, but it's essentially a, a way to separate parts of the game so you might have a, a state for the game title screen you might have a main state which is where the game actually is or you might even have multiple uh, main states for say levels you might have a level one state a level two state a level three state and so on uh, depending how you want to structure your game so uh, again if you're watching this having come from my Ionic tutorials uh, you can kind of consider it like a, a individual component like a page uh, everything is sort of separated into its own uh, little area and so this just sets the game up uh, the size of the game so this is just setting it to the uh, width and height of the screen generally when I create games I like to try and make them scalable to all uh, screen sizes and device types so then the most important thing we have are our states in here and we've got various different um, states that uh, we can use as uh, so we have like the boot and the preload state uh, states which go through loading in our assets for us if we're using any images or audio uh, or things like that uh, we've got a game title example screen here uh, but the main thing we want to take a look at is this main state and that's where uh, a lot of the game itself is going to be developed so as I mentioned you may have different sort of main states this might not be the only main state for your game you might have different states for different levels um, but this is the sort of style that you'll be using to create the the actual game parts of your game so uh, we have these uh, kind of like life cycle events here uh, we have a create method and this is something that's called uh, when the state is first started so it's what handles setting up the environment uh, you'll do things here like adding the sprites to the game adding audio whatever you need to set up in that state will happen in here and then the update method is uh, kind of the most important part of the whole process because it runs uh, it cycles constantly so this update method is going to be consistently called throughout the running of your game and it's what to use to check the current state of the game what's happening so this is where you'll check for things like collisions between certain sprites and then you could handle what happens uh, when that collision occurs maybe the player dies maybe they get a power up uh, they get some points or something like that and then you can sort of just fill out this uh, main state with um, more functions things to help your game run uh, and use in this update method uh, you can also sort of separate out some things into their own objects to clean things up a bit so uh, you might want to separate out your player object into its own object here uh, which will handle a lot of the logic for that player and then import that in here to use uh, so to give a little bit more context to this file I'm going to switch to a, a tutorial that I recently uh, released uh, I'll link to this tutorial as well uh, so this is a more uh, fleshed out version of an actual game in phaser and so the game is essentially just a, a helicopter style game where you control a helicopter that goes up and down and you try to dodge some obstacles so you can see uh, we're importing a couple of things here I've got a uh, walls uh, moving walls uh, object set up here that controls the obstacles and a helicopter object uh, which sets up the helicopter 
and the various methods that uh, that uses. Uh, I'm not going to discuss this in detail. I'd recommend going to take a look at the tutorial if you're interested in how this works. Uh, but you can see here we just import those and then we're setting them up in this create method here. As I mentioned, this is sort of uh, the thing that runs initially to set up the state. Uh, we create the helicopter, we create the walls and we add our controls and timers. So this is setting up the, uh, the controls for the game so the user uh, can control the helicopter and these timers uh, are events that run to trigger certain things. So in this case, every two seconds, we're spawning a new obstacle into the game. And the update method, it's actually quite uh, simple. Uh, all we're doing here uh, is uh, checking for an overlap between the helicopter sprite and the walls. So if the player runs into a wall, it's going to trigger this game over function, and that's going to restart the game. And then we're just checking two more things here. We check if the helicopter's out of bounds. And in that case, uh, we also trigger the game over method. And we also check if the helicopter is currently rising. That means that the user is uh, holding down on the screen or clicking, uh, in which case we want to uh, lift the helicopter up. And so we call its increased vertical velocity method, which we have in here to do that. So this, this update method is sort of where most of the logic for the game happens. So uh, you could have a ton of things in here, like uh, uh, maybe if a user has collected a power-up, you might have some power-up setting active, and you check if that's currently active in here, and if it is, you might uh, change some things. So um, maybe if they've got some invincibility power-up, you check for that here, and if, they, uh, if they're currently invincible, then you don't kill them when the helicopter goes out of bounds. Uh, what I do like about Phaser though is that well, obviously we get to work with web tech, which is a lot of fun. I like working in JavaScript, uh, but it's also quite easy to create a decent game with not all that much code. Um, once you get used to how to use the various methods in Phaser, like adding sprites and checking for collisions and things like that, uh, you could knock out a simple game like this in, uh, in a couple of hours or something like that. And obviously the code here is it's quite simple. This is really all the code uh, for the game. And of course right now it's uh, not using uh, any particular sprites or background images or audio, uh, but these are things that are quite easy to add into the game to make it look a lot prettier. So obviously most of the tutorials and stuff I do right now are sort of mobile app based. Uh, I do a lot of Ionic stuff. So if you are the kind of person who is more interested in that content, uh, I hope that you just found this at least a little bit interesting. Uh, if you are interested in creating games, I think it's a, it's a really fun thing to do just to let off uh, a little bit of steam, do something a little bit creative uh, rather than uh, constantly working with complex logic in creating mobile apps. That can be fun too, but I think this is a nice little um, relief from that. So if you're interested, I recommend checking it out, see if you can build a game in Phaser. And I'll, I'll probably release some more, more videos and tutorials uh, in the future as well. Uh, I, I do occasionally blog about phase. I hope to do it a bit more. Uh, so if you are interested in this content, let me know uh, so I know to make some more uh, videos and things like that. Because uh, I do know that uh, most of you are here for the Ionic stuff. So uh, yeah, let me know. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.